When building ETL processes, it's very common that you'll want to only capture data that has changed on your sources from the last time you ran your pipeline. Those change data capture and incremental data patterns are very, very common, and they're very easy now in Azure Data Factory and Azure Synapse Analytics. What we've done is we've enabled a checkbox called Capture Change Data for a limited number of sources. We'll be adding this capability to many more sources as we go along. For now and for this demo, I just want to demonstrate to you how easy it is to get started by using the change capture capability built into Data Factory. So on my screen, I've already designed a pipeline that I've been using previously that is not capturing change data. Even though I called it CDC 80 less Gen 2 for my data flow, I'm going to now enable that for you and show you how easy it is. So all my pipeline has is this one single data flow activity. I'm going to go into that data flow and on my source, which is an ADLS Gen 2 source called CDC Movies, you'll see that this data set is connecting into my movies data. So what I did was I pointed to a folder called my container slash CDC. So this is the container and this folder is called CDC. I'm going to capture any file that lands in there that has uh, either been just created or has been edited since the last time I ran the pipeline. It will automatically pick up the data from that file. The way to do that is to go in and click on the Enable Change Data Capture button from Source Options. And basically, that's all I have to do. I'm not going to change anything else on my Source Settings or Options. I'm going to leave my transformations in place, because all it's going to do now is run the same set of transformations in the same pipeline, but only get the changes in the deltas from the last time it ran. What I'm going to do is, in my sync, I keep the mapping as auto mapping so I land all the columns and I create a new file every time by using the default file name option so that Dataflow will create a new file every time this is run using the Spark partitioning mechanism. Let's go back out into the pipeline now that I've set CDC on for this Dataflow. Now before I run this for you here live in the demo what I want to do is I want to show you the single file that is currently sitting there in the ADLS Gen 2 folder. It's just called movies.csv and it's my movies file, uh, text limited file that I use for demos like this all the time. Now, this is a new file that has not been processed yet. So when I go to my pipeline and I click on debug, what ADF is going to do is it's going to detect that that file is new there and it's going to process it. All I'm doing, remember, inside of this data flow is I've switched on the source option of change data capture. And I'm creating a couple of fields, but this, this is for a different uh, set of work I was doing. Uh, not really relevant to this, but you'll, you'll see these, these, uh, these columns coming through at the end anyway. And then it's going to sync a set of new files every time. So we'll know whether or not ADF picked up the new files and the new changes. So we'll go back to the pipeline. We'll see that this is done. We can look at the details on the monitoring and we can see that indeed 9,000 rows were calculated and 9,000 rows were written. And let's just verify that by going over to the output container. I was writing, remember, to my container slash CDC. And so there is the single file. So it used one single partition, and it wrote all the rows out here. And if you click on it, you should see all the same data. And there it is. Everything looks fine. There are those two new columns that I was driving inside of that data flow. Right, so let's go back to the pipeline. And I'm going to leave the container as it is with that single movies.csv file. Let's run this again. So what do you think should happen this time? Because nothing has changed, ADF should do nothing right? Because the file was already processed and it knows that. So let's let this run for a few seconds and let's look at the details again. Now what we see is there were no rows. Nothing was done. It was completely ignored because the file was not updated. So if we go to the output folder and we refresh here, nothing has changed. It's still just that one output file. That's great. Let's go into the source file now. Let's make an edit inside of the file so that the file will be updated. Let's change the um, this first row uh, where I have some intentionally uh, bad data for data quality demos that I perform. Let's change the rating from a 3 to a 9 for this movie, Faulty Towers, from 1975 with John Cleese, right? Let's save this. Now that file has been touched. Now if we go back to the pipeline, run this again. Again, I'm not doing any work at all in the pipeline. I'm just executing. So you can imagine that instead of clicking this manually and debugging this or manually triggering this pipeline, this pipeline will be running from a trigger that you have set, a schedule trigger, maybe every minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, every hour, whatever. Regardless, when you set change capture on, it's going to only capture the changes every time. This is completed. And now if I look at what happened, you saw that 9,000 rows were calculated again. If I go to the output folder, 
you see a second file now that was created because this has been updated. If I click into it, you should see that the uh, new rating of 9 is uh, reflected there. Now let me show you what happens if I were to add another file into this folder. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to upload a file. My new file is called newmovie.csv. And I just put in one you know, bogus movie that I made up from 2021 called My Fake Movie. It's a drama. Rating of 100 Rotten Tomatoes and 8 rating overall with an ID of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now I didn't touch the other file, so ADF will ignore that and we'll just pick up this new row. If I go back to my pipeline, the next trigger runs. And we will emulate that by clicking the debug button. Watch the progress down here. Let's go and look at it in real time this time. And we can see that it succeeded and it wrote one row. So it picked up only the one row. It ignored the file that was already existing there. Let's go back to the output folder. And we see that it did indeed just pick up that one new row and wrote it to this output file. Now, this feature is available for currently <clears throat> as a uh, new preview within Data Factory. It is available for um, ADLS Gen 1, ADLS Gen 2, uh, Cosmos DB, and Blob Store. We'll be adding this feature to uh, additional connectors as we move forward. Thanks for watching.